All right, YouTube, today I want to talk about some misconceptions surrounding pulleys. You see, typically when people look at or talk about pulleys, they just have a picture of a pulley and they don't actually see the pulley move. Typically a diagram would just show a fixed end of a pulley with some little pulley wheels and then the active end or the load with some little pulley wheels on it and a couple of strings back and forth in between them and it doesn't get at what's really happening with a pulley. So let's look at this pulley that's actually able to move to help you understand exactly what's going on anytime you've got a pulley. On a pulley, there's really two ends of the string. You have this input end of the string and an output end of the string, which can be connected either up here or down here. But what people don't realize typically is that this string is all one string. Here there's actually five strands going up and down, but realize it's all one continuous string that's just been wrapped and wrapped and wrapped around on itself. I could keep pulling this and you'll see it's all just one thin strand. Now, you might have noticed as I pull on this input end of the strand, the load doesn't move nearly as far. And there's a reason behind that. If I start with the input side of our pulley right here and I pull it 30 centimeters downward, we know this segment of the string has grown in length by 30 centimeters, but this hasn't moved up 30 centimeters. And that's because there's five strands over here. And ultimately what's happened is this side grew by 30 centimeters. And so in total, these five strands needed to give up 30 centimeters worth of string, or they had to get 30 centimeters shorter in total, but that total change in length of string over here on this end of the pulley is split, in this case, between five strands of string. What that means is the load only moves one-fifth as far as I move the input. And that difference between how far the input moves and how far the output moves is what we call ideal mechanical advantage. Or really, that is the ratio of the distance in divided by the distance out. Now, you look at this and go, why on earth would we have to pull something 30 centimeters in order to only have it move 6 centimeters? What kind of a crap deal is that? And let me explain. See, if I was to pull on this string, it's ultimately providing some tension in the string. So let's say I pull on this with a force of, say, 1 newton. That 1 newton of tension is going to be transferred through to the other 5 strands over on this side over here. So that tension of one newton is going to act upward five times on this load. Ultimately, what this does is multiplies the force with which I'm acting on this load. So I can put in one newton of force and get out of it five newtons of force. And this ratio of forces is what we call actual mechanical advantage. And it's calculated by the force out divided by the force in. Now, in a perfect world, the actual mechanical advantage and the ideal mechanical advantage are the same, but there's friction in here. And so ultimately what happens is some energy or some of my work is lost on this pulley. And so the actual mechanical advantage is typically going to wind up less than the ideal mechanical advantage. Now, if you want to talk about this in terms of physics, if I was to pull with a force over a certain distance, I would do work because work is given by force times distance or force times displacement. And so if I pull with a small force over a large distance, I've done a cer certain amount of work. The load, on the other hand, is going to have a large force on it over a smaller distance. So ultimately what's happening is the work that I put into the system is mostly going to come out of this system. What's lost in here is inefficiency or energy lost to, really, friction. So ultimately, I hope this helped you understand pulleys a little bit. And on that note, that's all for now.